good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast today marks 103 years since the independence of Cilicia, sons of Western Armenia, Artashes Hakopian. On the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia, residents are making great efforts to somehow overcome the problems caused by the blockade. Representatives of UN office and UN agencies to visit Gornizor in 1991 thanks to military operations, Azerbaijani ontology threats to the population of Padara and neighboring villages were simply eliminated by Gladian. The Armenian wrestler became bronze medalist in Constantinople. The restoration of the 10th century temple in the village of Kumurdo has been suspended. At the beginning of 1920, taking advantage of French apathy, the Kemalists attacked Marash in the direction of Cilicia. The French abandonment of Marash had a tragic meaning not only for the city but for the entire Armenian population of Cilicia. Thousands of Armenians from Marash were massacred in the city and during the flight. Some of the survivors sought refuge in Syria. Armenian political parties continued to believe that with the help of the French, the separation of Cilicia from the crumbling Ottoman Empire and its autonomy under French protection would be possible. On August 4, 1920, in Adana, the National Council, headed by Miran Damadian, declared the independence of Cilicia. From this day forward, we declare Cilicia a free country, completely independent of Turkey, with a Christian self-government and under the mandate of France. However, the French did not just renege on their promise. On August 5, the day after Cilicia declared its independence, the Armenians, led by Damadian, demanded that the same Bremen Damadian leave the government building in Adana when the government and other Turkish officials left the building and occupied the region themselves. When the Armenians refused to comply with the demand of their supposed friends and allies, the French Bremen himself came to governor's office and, under military threats, expelled Damadian from the building. Watch the debate on Cilician independence on our YouTube channel. Artashes Hakopian, 20 years old, who was brought up and grew up in Nizhde ideas, remained firm in the homeland and was a great patriot. When they talked about emigrating from Armenia, he adamantly opposed it, saying, if you live in another country, who will protect and develop your country? If the situation is bad, you have to learn from it and do something about it. When the 44-day war began, he had two months left for demobilization. He couldn't wait to get home. Sister Mariam remembers. Head called, head said, I'm going to die for you. What's up? How are you? I miss all of you. There is very little time left and I'm going home to be with you all, to be by your side. Artashes was an expert marksman. However, in addition to his gun, the junior sergeant also possessed several other types of weapon. During the 44-day war, he fought heroically in the hot spots. Jeragan Hadru Tahavard Kert Avetaranot Karmir Shuka. Thanks to his fighting skills and correct calculations, he and his friends destroyed a great deal of enemy manpower and military equipment in those days. The last time Artashes called home was on October 28 and on the same day while already trying to save the wounded commander, he was hit by enemies ATS and Artashes was immortalized. London and Poland hand in hand used every means to deceive the Armenian people to steer them along the path of hatred for autonomy to really disrupt Armenian-Russian relations, to revise the territorial points in Berlin and above all to change the form and content of Article 16. Sultan Abdul Hamid was familiar with the Armenian autonomy plan. With his knowledge and permission, the Armenian delegation traveled to Berlin. Days and months passed after the signing of the San Stefano Peace Treaty, but it received no definitive legal recognition. A delegation and complex diplomatic struggle took place over the terms of the Russo-Turkish peace, the main content of which was the efforts of the Western European powers to minimize the victory of Russian arms in the Balkans and Armenia, with the Ottomans aiming to make the most of the empire's legacy for themselves. Each of the great powers thought and acted according to its own interest. Of course, it will be strange if the main capitalist powers fighting for the colonization of the East, contrary to their own interest, really cared about the problem problem of freeing the Armenians from the Turkish yoke or improving their conditions. Not only have the Turks not created, they have learned nothing from ancient civilization. They learned nothing because that civilization interfered with their cautious way of life. Instead of creating Muslim architectural monuments, they preferred existing Christian monuments at best. They transformed them into mosques. As stated in the History of the Armenian People, Volume 6, neither the Ottoman Empire nor the colonial countries, nor Tsarist Russia and the 
society's desire to grant autonomy or the independence to the Armenian people. The demand for Armenian autonomy put forward or defended by the great powers on various occasions was, one way or another, nothing more than a game of goal-seeking. The full article is available on our website. The inhabitants of the village of Noragyuk in the Askeran region of the Republic of Artsakh are making great efforts to overcome to some extent the problems caused by the blockade. In a conversation with Artsakh press correspondent Vladimir Petrosyan, head of the village of Noragyuk, said that due to the lack of fuel, they were able to complete the barley and wet harvest with great difficulty. However, I must mention that compared with the previous years, the number of greenhouses in the village has doubled and a large volume of vegetable crops has been sown. It's fortunate that the harvest was not affected by hail and meets the demands of the inhabitants. Moreover, they are sold, detailed Petrosian. According to the mayor, these days, with the support of the regional administration, the village is trying to solve the problem of bread shortage. They plan to obtain flour from the wet they have and each family will bake bread at home. The village is trying to make do with existing stocks of meat. Due to the lack of fuel, there are also problems bringing haystacks from the pastures of the village. The kindergarten continues to operate on a show string. The inhabitants don't want to lose hope that when the Berzor corridor is opened, we will be able to move around freely and the food problem will be solved, said the village chef of Noragyuk. A visit by representatives of the UN office and UN agencies in Armenia scheduled for today in the Kornizor border zone, followed by meetings in Goris. It should be noted that we are already on day 9 and there is still no movement. No new developments have taken place overnight and 21 trucks loaded with humanitarian cargo are already waiting in the Kornizor border zone. In the last two trucks, exclusively confectionery mainly with a long shelf life which is stored in refrigerated conditions. In most of the other 19 trucks, the refrigeration mode is always activating during the day so that the medicines, powdered milk and baby food in these trucks do not spoil prematurely. Facebook post by Artak Beglarian, advisor to the Minister of State of Artsakh. The inhabitants of Batara tell us about Lesno, how the Azerbaijani who have lived there since the 1960s kidnapped, killed and burned the inhabitants of Batara. Then they try to accuse us of killing civilians, in which cause in December 1991, thanks to ordinary small-scale combat operations, the existential Azerbaijani threats to the population of Batara and neighboring villages were simply eliminated. Eric Dermatevosian became the bronze medalist at the European Under-17 Greco-Roman Championship. Armenian wrestler Eric Dermatevosian became the bronze medalist at the World Under-17 Greco-Roman Championship held in Constantinople. This is reported by Wrestling Armenia Telegram Channel. In the small final, Dermatevosian beat his Greek opponent Eleftherios Papas with a score of 8-2. On July 31, the Under-17 Greco-Roman World Championship kicked off in Constantinople. It is already the seventh year that cathedral restoration work has begun in the village of Kumurdo, but in recent years work as part of the restoration hasn't progressed too far, and this year nothing has been done at all. In 2016, restoration work began on the 10th century Kumurdo temple, as the locals call it, the Church of the Holy Ascension. At the start of the renovation work, it was said that the work would take three years, but in 2018-2021 was given as the final figure. It turned out to be not three, but five years. However, restoration of the temple was not completed in either 2021 or 2022, and this year work has not resumed at all. In 2021, employees of Architects LLC engaged in the restoration, stated in an interview with Genio that they intended to reach the dome in 2022, after which there should have been a pause to agree on the device and shape of the dome, and before that it was planned to install a temporary dome, but also it was expected that the restoration work would last several years. In June 2022, Genius submitted a request to Georgia's National Agency for the Protection of Cultural Heritage to find out what restoration work was underway and when it would be completed. Kumurdo residents assure that no restoration work has been carried out on the temple this year. Genius will send another request to Georgia's National Agency for the Protection of Cultural Heritage. The response will be available in forthcoming Javak Information Center documents if received by Genius. The village of Kumurdo 
Komodo is distinguished by its monumental temple built in the 10th century, which stands majestically to this day. It was built by Bishop Hovannes in the years 957 to 964 during the reign of King Leo III of Abkhazia and Zviad Yeristav. At that time, Komodo was the residence of Bagrat I the Great, the Georgian ruler of Java, who had the South Gallery built. Restoration work began with the scandal surrounding the bones unearthed during archaeological excavations. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. <laughs> 